Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Suburbia Inc, which is an excellent expansion to an already excellent game, Suburbia, which I have done, I did a run through for Suburbia about a year ago, and just FYI, heads up, this run through is going to assume you, the audience, know how Suburbia plays. So I'm not gonna spend much time talking about the base mechanism, I'm just gonna be demonstrating what the expansion adds. So if you don't know the base game, I'd suggest before watching this, go watch the original Suburbia run through. There's a link to it right there on the screen, so so you can hit that button in five, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative. Okay, oh, you're still here. All right. Well, that must mean you know how to play Suburbia. You just want to see what's new, Magoo. So let's jump right into it. Now, to demonstrate, I'm actually going to only run through a couple. I'm not going to do a full run through because you know how the base game works. I'm just going to do a few turns to show what's new. And for starters, it's impossible not to notice these new region tiles. These are probably the biggest, most impactful things that get added in this expansion. Now, as part of setup, there's a whole stack of them, and three of them are laid out. There's always three of them randomly chosen, available to purchase at any point. And you purchase them the same way you purchase the, uh, what do you call it, the, the generic tiles, the suburbs, community park, and heavy factory. You know, when you purchase those, you buy them, you put them, and then you have to basically trash something from the market. To, and the same thing is true for this. The very, very first round, when, when this game started, I was the first player. I looked over here and I saw that the bay tile is here. I love the bay. I hadn't built this yet. And so I just popped down. 13 bucks, very expensive, 13 of my 15 starting dollars to build this because, because I wanted to get it before Jim did because it was absolutely awesome. Now it cost me 13 bucks, I had to trash something, I think I trashed this fast food restaurant, I don't really remember now. And then I slapped it down. Now the rules for putting these things down is the same as any other tile. It just has to be put next to an adjacent, adjacent to the next one tile. So I could have put it, let's see at the beginning I was like this, I could have done it like this if I wanted and created this candy wapis thing. But instead I kind of tried to keep things a little bit even Steven and I put it down like that. And now when I did it, it like any other tile, this had a benefit. It increases my popularity by one, so I was earning more points. And it also had a special power, which was $8 for every adjacent industrial, civic, residential, or commercial tile. So even though this cost me 13 bucks right up front, I made 16 because I put it next to these two tiles. So I actually made a profit off of it. And so that was a really great way to start. And then subsequently, uh, and, you know, and, and then another one came out, I think it was this forest came out, and then you know, we, we continued to play. Let's see, what's, what else has happened? Um, I bought this development planner. This is a very, very cool, you'll notice this is a black tile. It is not one of the standard color tiles. I bought this, it cost me seven, you know, plus whatever else is in the market, and I can put it anywhere. I've just gone ahead and put it over here by the bay. Now the interesting thing is, it's a black tile, so that means it did not get me eight bucks, because it's not a yellow, gray, green, or blue tile. It's a black tile. And um, here's the thing. This didn't increase my income, it didn't increase my popularity, it gave me nothing. And in fact, it's kind of literally a black hole because it didn't benefit me off of anything else. Although, it also didn't get me anything negative off this heavy factory because it didn't count as one of the negatives either. It just sits there taking up space. But, it's a great investment because at any point during the game, any time in the game, when it's my turn, I could take any top, any tile at all from the market for free. So if near the end of the game, the very expensive stadium or air, super air, international airport came out and it was over here and it cost 10 bucks plus whatever it normally costs 50, you know, so it was like 20, 30, whatever, I could get it totally for free and then slap it down in this spot. So this is like the ultimate advanced planning tile. And so I figure, you know, sooner or later, you know, later in the game, when something comes out and I really want it, and I don't want Jen to get it, but I don't have enough money, I'll just grab it for free, slap it down here, and I'll make eight bucks at that point, because I'll be putting whatever it is next to the bay. So I've got that, that's a really cool move. Let's see, oh, uh, another one. This cemetery is a new tile. It's kind of a neat one. It, you actually lose population when you first put it down, lose to population, I guess, because they die, and go to the cemetery, they're just so excited to die. But um, it increases your income for every resident. So this was nice. Actually, both the cemeteries came out pretty quick, so both Jen and I grabbed one. And you can see we both got some residences next to it, and that's where our, our early income is coming from. And it's interesting, we both chased after this because we both knew in this game we were going to be after getting more residential tiles. Not because of our secret bonuses, not because of the public bonuses, but because of another new feature from in um, Suburbia Inc., the bonuses and uh, challenge tiles. What that means is you come over here, you'll notice um, tiles stack B and C, 
they've got a new tile on top of them that doesn't exist in the base game. Uh, as part of setup, after you set up these stacks, you put a random bonus and a random challenge on B and C. As you can see, the game comes, oops, oh dear, I just made a big mess with a whole bunch of these. And I just slapped around a few more. And oh, I'll clean that up later. Oh, I didn't mess up anything too bad. All right, so the game comes with a whole bunch and so randomly, when we have to start drawing from stack B, we will evaluate this border bonus and find out if anybody scored it. And then when we have to start drawing from stack C, we'll evaluate this challenge. And everybody has the potential to earn these. And as you can see, when we get to stack C, the challenge is we get plus three population if we have at least five residential tiles. And that's a big deal. That's not easy to do. So you can see we're both trying to invest in residents and there's only so many suburbs. So not mo both of us might not make that. Also, the bonus that came out at the beginning, this is plus three income if you have one of these regions. That's another reason I grabbed the region right away because I did not want to take a chance of not getting a good region because when we start drawing from here, I'm gonna have a big bonus for that. And, let's see, I think that tells you enough told you about what the bonuses are, what the challenges are, what these are, and then of course there's a whole bunch of new tiles in the game. Now, I'm gonna play around, it's actually, it's Jen's turn, and I've chosen, I've, I've, I figured, hey, this is a good time to start filming, because whenever, whatever Jen does, whether she takes one of these from the market, whether she takes one of the basic ones, you know, or she builds a lake, we are gonna be empty and we're gonna start drawing from the B. So we are about to evaluate this border bonus and Jen does not have a border yet. That's what they're called, borders. So just Jen is definitely gonna get a border this turn. And in fact, it was so important to her to do it, last turn, she just wasted time getting this lake. She already had a bunch of money, but she needed more money because all the borders that were out were very expensive, nine, 12, and 18 bucks. So when Jen got this lake down, that gave her four bucks. So she's now got nine, 10, 11. So she, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Not enough. If she had 12, she could have gotten this military base, which increases her income and increases population when you build civic building next to it. She can't afford that, but she can afford the four. So she's gonna buy that, which is paid nine bucks, leaves her two, and she's gonna build herself a forest. Okay, now, where does she put it? Oops, that goes back over here. Now she again she has to, she can put it like this, but the forest it, the forest has no immediate benefit. Like my bay um, increased my popu my popularity. The forest has no immediate benefit, but it increases my popularity for every civic, uh, residential, or commercial space next to it. So I want to put put this in such a place that it doesn't really cramp my style. Because here's the thing: me putting this bay out right at the very beginning, real it's cut off. The entire, I can pretty much only expand in this direction now. If I want to build over in this area, I would have to expand now down and around and come back up and that gets very, very costly and very wasteful. So I've pretty much cut off half of my expansion ability by building this bay. Jen is now gonna put herself in a pinch too because she's gotta decide where to put this thing. And really she doesn't have any good spots because she doesn't want to put it next to this heavy factory because a forest doesn't benefit from being next to a factory or a lake. So, I mean, but she can't do it like this. Oh, wait, oh yeah, she can, look at that. Oh, I gotta move this. So she could go like this, and then it's nice and neat, it's next to these two, it gets a benefit. Plus you could put a tile here and it would get a benefit, but this space would never get filled up, would never get a benefit. But what's worse, if Jen does this, she has cut off the cemetery, and the cemetery needs more residentials next to it. So that's not a good move either. <clears throat> so thinking about it, I think her best move Let's see, so she could do something like this. Now unfortunately, once again, she has wasted one of the three income slots or popularity slots because nobody cares about having a forest next to this factory. But she still has room to build her other residences so she can completely surround her cemetery. So she's pretty happy about that. But obviously this becomes a very, very tight narrow, but then she can build off in these directions. Now she could go like this, let's say. And then she knows she's got to build, um, you know, a civics, residents, or commercials in these zones to make the most of them. Um, but it lets her expand in this direction and in this direction. But you know, I mean, the thing is, over the course of the game, she's going to want to build more of these. And the more cattywampus and crazy all out of direction she gets, the tougher it's going to be able to build. I mean, I've seen pictures, and I've done them myself, where you create crazy windmills of borders that just really stop you in your tracks. I think Jen likes the kind of cleanness of this. She's going to build it like that. Okay. And so now she's got to pay, she's paid the money for it. She's got to trash something. 
Um, cause like I said, it's, it's like building a normal thing. She doesn't, she only has two more bucks. So she could trash one of these, but I think she'll trash either the waterfront realty or the business supply store. I guess this is a nice thing just to get some money and she knows I could use it too. So she'll trash that. So that's gone. And so she slapped it down. Now it gave her, it itself gave her no immediate benefits, but she would increase her popularity if there, but there's not. So basically she's put it down and she gets no benefit from immediately. So it doesn't change anything. So she's built. Now, like as always, she collects her income two bucks and one point. So she makes two bucks and one point at the end of her turn. And then, now uh, this time, uh, two things come out. Let's see, the amusement park, which costs 15 bucks. Everything gets cheaper. And boom, we have to draw from B. So now we do the border bonus. We look around, everybody's got a border. So everybody increases. One, two, three. One, two, three. Everybody increases their income. And the, the bonus is done. And now we bring out whatever is new for turn B. Light rail, oh, which is another new tile. This is a pretty cool one. 12 bucks, it's, it's expensive. But um, for having it next to commercial and civilian or you know, residential buildings, plus one income and plus one population or popularity, that's a pretty big deal. So that's a nice one, although it's very expensive. But see, I, it's not for me. If I wanted, I could build this for free right now and just slap it down, replacing my um, residential, my, my redevelopment planner I did. But anyway, it's, um, all right, so that's come out and now it's my turn and I've only got three bucks. Wow, so I can't really build very much, but I could get this light rail right now, which would get me eight more bucks for building next to the bay. Although actually, no, this is a terrible place to put it because I want to put it next to a residential commercial, so I'm not gonna do that. Do I want to use my residential power to get something else, a fancy restaurant? That'd be a nice boost to my economy. No, I think I'm gonna wait till even later when things get crazy expensive. So with only three bucks, I can't afford either. I can't afford the business supply store or the municipal airport, but you know what I can afford? I'm gonna pay three bucks and I'm gonna build me another suburbs because I am still always thinking about this residential challenge. I gotta get five residential tiles and there's only so many of them left. So I'm gonna build this. I'll slap it down right next to my cemetery and so that increases my score by two, one, two. And uh, my cemetery, every residence next to it, I, so my income increases again. Cool, so I've adjusted everything. And then I make six bucks and I score, uh-oh, three points. One, two, three, I've crossed the line and now everybody knows that means I gotta drop down because I've become a bigger suburb. And, but I still got five bucks, so I'm, I'm, or six bucks, I'm happy with that. Let's see, now oh, I had to trash something. What was I gonna trash? Well, I still, um, hmm, it's interesting. The business supply store is another one of those things that helps you if you have those uh, briefcase tokens, but no briefcases have come out yet. But we do want briefcases because we have a public bonus to whoever has the most briefcases. So somebody's gonna go for briefcases and that means this business supply store is maybe a little bit more useful than normal. But you know, who knows? Maybe, I mean, there might be a real shortage on briefcases. That's a dangerous thing to chase. Municipal or I'm gonna trash the airport. Um, right, and so everything is cheaper. And now what comes out? Oh, wait, oh wait, shoot, I've already trashed something. I already did, because that's when the light rail came out. Sorry, I'm just repeating myself. I already trashed. So that was my turn. I got more you know, suburbs, increased my income. I'm two away from ensuring I've, I've fulfilled the residential challenge, and now it's Jen's turn again. And let's see, now her special um, secret thing is, this is from the base game, she wants to use as many of her bonuses as possible, but she's not gonna do that until she has something that really pays off. Mine is a new one, actually. I wanna have the fewest sets of yellow, gray, green, and blue. So that's another thing I'm bearing in mind. It actually works kinda of nice with the whole get a lot of residentials, cause I want to ensure I don't get a lot of sets. So I might avoid ever building any commercial, because that means I have no sets. And as soon as Jen builds one commercial, I've scored this 15 points and she didn't even know it. Um, so you know, that's a part of my strategy as well. But anyway, it's Jen's turn. You know, she still needs to get residentials out as well. The suburbs are going fast because of that residential challenge. The investment property costs 12 bucks. That's still a little bit expensive. So I think Jen, she's gonna follow suit. She's gonna pay three. This is just something that generally doesn't happen in our games a lot, that we just keep um, gobbling up residences like this. She'll get another suburb, cost her three, increased her income by one, and because of the cemetery. And then so she'll end up getting six income and only one point, so she's staying below the line, which is good for her. And right, and so she's got her income, and she has to trash something to build that. I guess she'll trash the municipal airport then. Everything gets cheaper. And B, 
the checkpoint. Oh, another one. This one, um, get two bucks for every border you've got. So if you have a lot of borders, that's a big deal. And um, in this game, we want a lot of borders because there's 15 points for whoever has the most. So that's pretty cool. All right, and so then it's my turn again. I got six bucks. I'm inclined to get the last suburbs because they've just been gobbled up so quick. And if I do, I will have guaranteed it. But on the flip side, uh, but I can't afford this investment property yet, which is certainly better than the suburbs, but I could wait. You know, or maybe I should go on ahead this business supply store. Well, I've only got six bucks. So I can't afford either of these. I probably need to make a lake. Although, the interesting thing, ah, well, on the flip side, I could go on ahead and build a community park. I can afford that, slap it down here, and it'll get me eight bucks from my bay because I'll have filled in another spot, and then I'll have enough money to get the investment property later. That's pretty nice. So that cost me four. And, um, but I get eight for my bay power. And now that means I'm gonna wanna put something in here that, does, that plays well with uh, factories and civics. All right, so uh, you know that's uh, all my bonuses. And then I get my five bucks and my two points, one, two. And oh, I had to trash something for that. I'll have trashed, hmm, um, the fancy restaurant. And everything gets cheaper again. Beep, 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 beep. A B comes out. Jen's turn. Oh, water purification plant. Very cool. Uh, you know, seven popularity because everybody wants to have purified water. But this is an interesting one. Normally, in the regular game, pretty much all the industrial want to be next to other industrial because they're, they're bad about being next to anything else. But this one's different. This one wants to get away from the other industry because if you put this down next to other industry, you lose money for it because the other industry have to clean up their act and start using the water purification plant. So this is a very different factory than most. Very interesting. But anyway, it's Jen's turn. She's got seven bucks. She still can't afford either of the two that are down here. So, but you know what? She can go, you know, I left it for her, so she's gonna grab that last suburbs, cost her three, and now boom, all the suburbs are gone, but it increased her income one more. And gave her two more points. I think I might have forgotten that last time. And let's see, the heavy factory and the community park, they cancel each other out, so that doesn't change anything. So Jen, she gets seven bucks income. Five, six, seven. She gets another point. And, um, right, she's got to trash something. Oh, and she'll trash this investment property, which I was hoping to get so I'd have my five suburbs, and Jen just trashed it. Ouch, Elliot. That's suburbia though, it can be a pretty uh, cutthroat game, Office of Bureaucracy. All right, and so that's my turn again. Jen has definitely nailed this challenge. I've still gotta find two more now, and there aren't any. So I've gotta hope that there are two in this stack, two more residentials, and I've gotta hope that I can get them, and because they're gonna come in and they're gonna be crazy expensive. I might have lost my, ch my shot. I should have taken that suburb when I had the chance. Oh, shoot. Well, Oh, well. But anyway, there you go. I think that's probably enough. Gives you an idea of what's new, what's different. These borders, well, I'm, I'll do final thoughts in the final thoughts. I don't need to talk about it right now. But still, I think you get an idea of how the game has changed, how long-term planning has become an even bigger deal. You know, you'd think the borders are the really big deal, but really it's these bonuses and challenges that really change the game up. But if you'd like to know more, you can hit the button on screen for final thoughts, or you'll follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.